Forbes India, Tycoons of Tomorrow, presented by Neon. Good actors uh, don't stay hidden for too long. Uh, at the same time, they need the right platform and opportunity to showcase their work to a large number of people. We, we have with us uh, three actors, Pratik Gandhi, Rasika Dugal, and Mithila Palgar, who have done some fabulous work across mediums. But it's the digital space that really shot them into the limelight. Before I speak uh, broadly about OTT versus cinema and uh, content, uh, I would like to ask you all about that one performance that has, it, that has had the greatest impact on your careers. I'll start with you, Pratik. Uh, Scam 1992 was undoubtedly the turning point of your career. Your performance was hailed by one and all. Uh, how has life changed uh, after Scam 1992? Uh, and before I ask, before I uh, allow you to answer that, uh, I mean, it's it's not been an overnight success. It's I mean, you worked for 15 years and uh, had a strong uh, foundation in theatre as well as Gujarati films. So it must not have been easy. Yeah, in fact, uh, so with your first line that you started, that good actors cannot be hid, uh, hidden know, for too hidden long. for too long. So either I was not a good actor earlier <laughs> for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> before scam came in my life <laughs> but yes yeah, so the scam changed my life uh, downside up i keep saying that, that i have two phases in my life pre scam and post scam <laughs> the scam changes a lot of lives all across the world and it changed mine for good and that's the reason that i'm here and having this discussion with you all <laughs> so uh, it put me on national international level suddenly and whatever that i was doing on stage or in regional cinema uh, had a little and a very limited reach. And suddenly, scam came and uh, the whole world noticed me. So even my uh, seven years daughter, she kept asking me that you have been acting since a long time. And why is now that people want to take photograph with you? What is it? What is what changed? And I didn't have answer to that. <laughs> the only answer is that I, I scammed them. <laughs> Uh, Rasika, um, you've done a lot of work in films, the likes of Kiss Akshay, before you did Mirzapur. But uh, your feisty, bold, fearless portrayal of Bina Tripathi uh, in the crime thriller took everyone by surprise because it's completely opposite of what you are. Uh, do you believe that the role uh, did a lot more for your career than any of your other work? It did, and it uh, never ceases to surprise me, the kind of following that uh, the show has. I'm still sort of taken aback by the kind of manic following that Mirzapur has. Uh, it completely uh, uh, was a new experience for me and I'm afraid that I'm getting addicted to it. Um, but, uh, uh, but before that, like you said, I'd done many independent films and films that I was very proud of, films that were uh, made with a lot of passion and love and uh, with, uh, with, with really preserving everybody's creativity during the process of filming. Uh, and uh, a, a film like, uh, uh, the film that I'm talking about is Kissa. And that film had only released only in two theatres in 2015 in Bombay. Uh, and that was very disappointing to me. And I remember the pre-Mirzapur days, I used to walk around, whenever I would go for a meeting, uh, I would carry a DVD of Kissa with me and say, you know, please watch my little <laughs> indie film. And uh, yeah, so that was the kind of experiences that I was having before. Mirzapur, I had never had access to the kind of audience that that show has. So yes, it, that changed many things for me. Mithila, you're literally um, uh, a new age star born on the internet. Uh, internet was very new when you started. Uh, the cup song that you did of the Marathi uh, hit, He uh, Chale Turu Turu, uh, became a rage. I mean, it has over 7 million views now. And plus, yeah. <laughs> Plus, uh, you have the popular little things, uh, uh, which is being spoken about even today. Uh, do you believe which of these two uh, do you think made a difference to your career and uh, sort of helped you gain that acceptance not only from the audience but also from your fraternity? Uh, I would uh, definitely want to say the cup song first and little things next because the cup song I think put me on the map. Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, as a singer and a YouTuber, and I was happy to just be known by people at that point in time. And of course, little things 
even today we we finished the show like we we had our finale show season last year re release last year but it still continues to be something that has reached across the globe and it is all thanks to the internet so yeah i think i was born here <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know any better <laughs> Rasika, when you were studying at FTII, you did an acting uh, diploma in acting. You said that you were surprised to know that people came there to become stars. Uh, of course, the time was different. But do you think OTT has changed the definition of stardom? Uh, it definitely has given opportunity for uh, more people to uh, be, be, be called stars, if I may say so. And, uh, it's not that, uh, and it's still, still I think, uh, remains a democratic uh, setup where every month there is a new star, a new star is born, you know. It's not that there are these eight people who got these four shows uh, five years back and they're the ones who keep getting, the, uh, getting work again and again. Every month there's a new show, there are new actors, there are new stars, so to say. Uh, so in that sense, I think it's made uh, a lot of things more democratic than it used to be. And I'm very grateful for that. I keep worrying that that's going to change. And uh, everybody keeps whispering and murmuring that that's changing every month. But so far, it hasn't. Uh, Pratik, you said your uh, stint in theatre helped you understand the grammar of acting. And you still go back to theatre. You did a play recently. You have an OTT release, uh, a film uh, which released recently as well. Uh, you said it took time for mainstream acceptance, but you wouldn't have it in any other way because that was a learning curve of sorts. Now you're in a position where uh, you can say no to a lot of things, uh, citing, you know, you're flooded with offers. <laughs> so much has changed in all these years. Uh, what is the difference that you see in the industry? That's the biggest difference uh, with ODD coming in is that it uh, broke the so-called equation or the standard formula. Because I always believe that we, uh, as entertainers, as actors, as creators, are in a business of experiments. So normally formulas are derived after the experiment is success. If it is not a successful experiment, you don't derive formula out of it. <laughs> so uh, in a business of experiment, how can you go by formula is the constant question that I, I would discuss with all my colleagues also. The theatre gave me that freedom uh, for the longest years in my life. Because we would experiment with all the different subjects and different, uh, uh, different setups also. So the kind of theatre that I kept doing for almost 15 years were, was always called uh, experimental theatre. And in fact, mainstream theatre, people never considered it as theatre also. So that already prepared me for these kind of uh, rejections in mainstream. Uh, and with OTT, because it broke the barrier of a set formula or a set kind of a format, it gave birth to different kind of storytelling. Right. And I have always believed that there was always an audience. It is just that we could never reach to that audience. Now with OTT and internet, we are reaching out to those people, those who like to watch these kind of stuff. So uh, it's a win-win situation, even for the audience, for the makers, for actors, everybody. Uh, Mithila, you've been language and medium agnostic. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that the advantage that an actor today has? I mean, you don't really need to restrict yourself to one particular medium to grow or to show uh, your talent or your work? 100%, 100%. And in fact, I'm, uh, every time I do something new, I'm hungrier for more. I just recently did a Telugu film and I'm like, okay, great. Now I want to do a Tamil film, a Malayalam film. And the fact that um, uh, these platforms are as accessible as they are to add to what both of them said is so right, like Pratik said that um, I think uh, we are not telling stories of heroes and heroines anymore. We are telling stories about people, which makes a lot, a lot of actors like us get the opportunities that we are getting today. And uh, so, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's a, the internet is an accessible platform, which makes it easy to reach also as far as you do when you're on the internet and uh, access as many things as you can. So you said it's not about heroes and heroines anymore, it's about people. Uh, which is why I think unlike movies where you need a star to justify a budget or maybe uh, that's the excuse they use to sign a big uh, name, you know, because you need an opening. Uh, is that uh, the reason why now uh, the casting on OTT is defined more by the script rather than anything else? Do you agree? Uh, you all can take turns and answer. Yeah. So I, I feel that uh, 
with OTT, what is happening is that first the definition of hero is changed. The one who is taking the story forward becomes a hero and there are like uh, in the professional world that we keep hearing situational leadership. Uh, in the long formats, we see those situational uh, heroes. In first two, three uh, episodes of a series, there is one person who is leading the story forward, so he becomes hero and suddenly he dies. So a new hero comes in and then he takes the story forward. Uh, apart from that, it doesn't have a pressure to perform in first three days, once it releases. Because mostly on first three days, the people who go and watch the film, they are going on the anticipation. And that anticipation comes from the faces involved, from the names involved, and maybe some subject line which comes across to you as an audience from the trailer, which excites you. After that first three days, what comes out is the real word of mouth. And that's when the turnout is seen. So that's the real test of the film or a product. Whereas in OTT, right from the first day, it is given to thousands of people at the same time. And they can watch it on their, uh, th their convenient time, but there is no pressure to perform on first three days. So that is also opening up a lot of doors for the experiments. Would you all want to chip in? I agree with him 100%. I feel like that is my favorite part about being on, uh, on the OTT. I didn't realize that until like I did a film in between and I was like, oh my God, everybody's worrying about how much it's going to make and how much, uh, how many people are going to actually go watch the film and going to buy the tickets. When you're on the internet, it's just, it's out there and then it's just there to be accessed by people at their convenience. Rasika? I think good content was always around and uh, uh, it's just that distribution was always a bottleneck. Uh, so even the independent films that I had done earlier, there were enough people who were producing uh, smaller content driven films at that time because the cost of production uh, had gone down significantly, things had gone from film to digital, so people were able to make a film even if they didn't have massive budgets. A film like Bheja Fry had done very well, uh, so there was incentive for other people to sort of experiment with the one crore film at that time. So there were a lot of small production houses that came up and made some very interesting content, but the bottleneck always remained distribution. I think the distribution networks were still sort of uh, risk averse and they, were, they would always say, Ki, nahi, uh, no, but we don't have an audience for such kind of content. But the OTT has broken that myth and therefore I think the content was always around. It's just that the success of good content uh, uh, on OTT platforms is proof of the fact that the audiences were always versatile and ready for a lot. It's just that we were not being able to reach them. Yeah, prior to the filming of Manto, uh, you said you were almost about to sign some five films and uh, the producers uh, said you weren't saleable enough and you missed out on those films. Uh, of course, that won't be happening right now. I think OTT is giving that kind of uh, uh, an opportunity for raw and untapped talent, don't you think? Yeah, I. I think that, I believe that, and I have even I experienced it. So with my first film, Bhavai, which got released after COVID, uh, after Scam, it was shot before Scam. And in fact, while shooting for that film, I was approached for Scam and I auditioned and I got selected. So that was my first Hindi film as, as a central protagonist. Uh, he was finding it too difficult to sell the film. And while, we were, while he uh, you know, asked me to do the film, my first question to him is that I am more than willing to do the film, but you first check whether you want to do this with me or no, because I understand it will be difficult for you to sell the film. And that's what happened after the film. So he could not release the film for two years after making a film. After Scam came, suddenly things uh, <laughs> changed. Uh, it was a different perspective. And then he could release the film. So this is a regular phenomenon. Uh, Nawazuddin Siddiqui had said in one of his interviews that, you know, OTT platforms are becoming a dumping ground now. It's just about quantity over quality. Do you think quality is going to suffer with so many OTT platforms coming up and... I don't know if it's because of the number of OTT platforms coming up. It's just that sometimes quality does suffer when uh, uh, you're asked to churn out content too quickly. I mean, we've seen that with subsequent seasons, for example, and I always try as much as I can to control that in the ones that I work with, that we kind of maintain the integrity of, of the first season uh, creatively, at least. And that is always the attempt. But yes, he's right. There's the good and bad here also. It's not like everything coming 
uh, on the OTT space is uh, is good. There's a lot of mediocre stuff, but there seems to be room for everything. You know, there seems to be an audience for everything. There seems to be uh, people who there seem to be people who can uh, create different kinds of things, and that's what that's what's exciting to me about this space. Uh, the pandemic. Uh, accelerated certain things when it came to OTT. Uh, obviously, the viewing patterns changed. Mithila, do you think it will remain the same even now? Because uh, the thing was that when theatres will reopen, everyone will go back to the theatres. But we've seen this year has not been that great for the movies. So many of them haven't done well. Do you see any shift in uh, viewing patterns um, in today's world? Uh, you know, the thing is that there is an audience for everything and we all want to go to the movies and watch the movies in, on the big screen as well. In fact, I feel like, um, you know, yeah, okay, it's becoming easier to access. A lot of people are like, okay, it will come on the OTT and we'll watch it then. But I watched a film recently called Sita Ramam uh, and I couldn't catch it in the theatre. It's not because I was lazy to go. I just, by the time I came back, it wasn't in the theatre. Uh, and then I said, no, I want to watch this film and I watched it and I felt bad about having watched it on my television screen. So there are films that are meant for the bigger screen and there are things that are meant to like, that are, that are quick bites or uh, that are better seen or watched or enjoyed on the internet on a smaller, in a smaller space. Um, so I feel like it is a, it's an ecosystem and it will balance itself out. I don't think it will be that lopsided anymore now that the world has opened up. Pratik, when you were trying to break through, you said, uh, you know, you found yourself a misfit as far as television was concerned because you saw all those fair-skinned people with bulging biceps over there and you thought, you know, this is not for me. But obviously things have changed so much and uh, you're, you have arrived, I mean, really. And it's not just about you, but all of you. Do you all believe you all have arrived and what's the plan ahead? Yeah, so I mean, the more I, I'm being asked this question, I feel that, that I have arrived. <laughs> because earlier never nobody asked me. But uh, the feeling of arrived comes when the makers are excited to work with you, when you are in the brains of the writers, when uh, the director is visualizing you with the script. So that's the best place for an actor to be in. And that's when you feel confident that now I, I'm not under the pressure to perform. I can go beyond and explore the character, e even in the deeper sense. So that is a very comfortable position. Rasika and Mithila? I start believing I've arrived and then one rejection happens and... <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Hey. It keeps you grounded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to the world. <laughs> Mithila. I guess. I just, I don't think of it as that really because I feel like the, um, I think we were all ri ri riding the wave of the internet revolution as it was rising. So I have just been going with the flow. So I don't, I have not asked myself this question of have I arrived? Maybe I have. <laughs> That's a mark of somebody who has arrived. Who doesn't ask that <laughs> question. <laughs> I've been enjoying what it is, what, what the internet has to offer, what the entertainment industry today has to offer and like we've all been saying, the narratives have changed, the stories have become different, it's not, um, the definitions have changed, so it's just a very exciting time to be part of the entertainment industry in my opinion. Well, all of you all are known as good actors, fabulous actors, so I think you all can safely say that you all have arrived. Thank you so much. This has been a, an absolutely enriching and insightful conversation. We could go on and on, but unfortunately, we don't have time. Thank you so much once again Thank for your you time. So we wish you all Thank the you. best. Thank you very much. Forbes India, Tycoons of Tomorrow, presented by Neon.